I'm going to ask you just a little bit more about oil. Uh, we know where you stand in terms of oil. Um, many respected authors and doctors do recommend flax, flax hemp, and olive oil. Uh, what do you think about that? Why do so many other authors think it's okay? Um, and is oil as damaging as animal products? Uh, I would say that I would ask you of the, uh, you mentioned that the, many doctors feel that this uh, olive oil is okay. Have they ever performed studies taking patients seriously ill with heart disease and reversing it? No. And a lot of the studies that come out, if you look carefully, the authors of the study are in the employ of the oil industry. All right? And I wrote a paper in the International Journal of Disease Reversal and Prevention in 2019. The title of the paper that I wrote was, Is Oil Healthy? And I review the animal studies and the human studies showing how oil injures the endothelial cell. Why is cardiac disease not as prevalent in half of the world, such as in rural China? <laughs> when you look back in the rearview mirror, we've known for over a hundred years that there are multiple cultures on the planet Earth where cardiovascular disease is very infrequently identified. And the common denominator is that all those societies were eating largely whole food, plant-based nutrition with none or a minimum of any oil. And uh, uh, is there any more to that question? No, just just again, you know, really, uh, the, the why why is cardiac disease not as prevalent in half the world, such as rural China? Well, I, uh, yeah, I'll take for example the the Tarahumara, the Papua Highlanders, uh, rural Okinawa, rural China, and Central Africa. I mean, those were classic. Now, one, as they become Westernized, though, <laughs> just to, to emphasize the point of nutrition, when they get Westernized, or when they move to this country. They absolutely are clobbered with a cardiovascular disease. Yeah. Why did the World Health Organization state about carcinogens, or what did the World Health Organization state about carcinogens in red meat in 2015? Yeah, that was uh, really a kind of a classic moment historically to think that in the WHO, the World Health Organization, with representatives from all the various cultures that they came to an agreement that red meat had the same level of carcinogenicity as smoking cigarettes. That ought to cinch up that one pretty tightly. Please discuss how the foundations of heart disease occur at an early age. Well, in answer to an earlier question, I mentioned that all experts would agree that where heart disease has its inception, its onset, its beginning, is when we injure the delicate innermost lining called the endothelial cells. But, and that's because the endothelial cells in turn are making nitric oxide, <clears throat> which is their great salvation of all our blood vessels. However, in this country, do you think children ever eat French fries do they ever eat lamb chops? Do they ever eat ice cream? Yeah, well, I mean, look, all these things do what? They injure the endothelial cells. When you start, start doing autopsies on 12 years old, 12 year olds who have died of accidents uh, or suicides, what have you, you already see this fatty streaking on their uh, arteries. And if you look at, uh, this is a wonderful study, 1999, of young women and men between the ages of 17 and 34 who have died of accidents, homicides, and suicides. The disease is ubiquitous, everybody. As a matter of fact, the, the, the precursor to that study came out of Korea uh, when 
they looked at the autopsy of our battle casualties. 80% of those average 20 year olds already had gross evidence of coronary artery disease. You could see without a microscope, not enough for their cardiac events yet. But so here we are and you graduate from high school in this country, you get a diploma, but you also get the foundation for heart disease. So is it any surprise that we reapproach our late 40s and 50s in this country, we begin to see this tsunami of a disease which we have been culturing and encouraging and ever since we were kids, eating the very foods that begin to destroy uh, the lining of our blood vessels, yeah. Please uh, discuss the 1951 study from The Lancet where doctors Storm and Jansen analyzed the death rates from stroke and heart attacks in Norway. Now that was really a kind of an interesting classic study in The Lancet. What Storm and Jansen did is they recognized the fact that when in World War II, when the Axis powers of Germany overran the, the Western countries of Holland, Belgium, they occupied Denmark and Norway. And characteristically, the Germans would take away from those countries, they would take away their livestock, their cattle, their pigs, their sheep, sheep their chickens, their turkeys, and so forth were gone. And suddenly now these Western European nations were plant-based. And it was interesting how Strom and Jansen tracked from 1927 right up through 1945, 46. They tracked the, the death rates from heart attack and stroke in Norway. And it was characteristically to, to see those death rates going up 1927, going up 1930, going up 35. Then in come the Germans in 39, 1940 the heart attack and deaths from heart attack and stroke plummeted. 41, continued to plummet. And in 1945, what happened? The death of Adolf Hitler, the cessation of hostilities in the European theater. Immediately, back comes the meat, back comes the dairy, back come the strokes, back come the heart attacks. Pretty classic, but sadly, uh, we just didn't get it. 